Hey, Wayne Fox. I've been working on this image in Photoshop for a while, and I'm pretty happy with it, but I need to pop back over in the Lightroom and make a small print just to see if there's something I'm missing and just to make sure that it's kind of what I think it's going to be. It looks pretty good, so I'm going to save this and then come back and move into Lightroom and make a small test print. I knew that would take a couple minutes, so I ran to the fridge to grab a quick snack, and when I get back, I ran into this little problem, uh, something I've been seeing more and more frequently as I work on more stitched files. One of the challenges is that a TIFF file can only be four gigabytes and anything larger than that uh, it will reject and the problem I have is that I don't know when I'm going to save the image whether I'm going to fit in that four gig limit or not. This image I thought I would because it's not that big, it's about 15,000 pixels wide and only a couple layers. So after waiting for the two or three minutes, I find that I do have to solve the problem. And I'm guessing if you're watching this video, that's because you're running into this problem more often as well. So of course the solution to that is when we save a file like this, we have to do a save as, and we have to choose large document format as our format to save it, because that does get around that four gigabyte limit. The problem with that, of course, is Lightroom can't see a large document format or .psb file. So even though I can save the file and I can open it again in Photoshop, and I could if I wanted to print it from Photoshop, I would rather go over to Lightroom to do my printing or to make other purpose files to use. And I need to figure out some way to do that. Now, I'm sure most people can think of four or five ways to do it. The simplest way is basically you flatten the image, you do a save as, and you make a TIFF file, and then you open that in your Lightroom library. Now, of course, the real problem is anytime you want to change that, you've got to go back and uh, locate the original PSB in your operating system, make your changes, and then you've got to flatten that file and save that as a TIFF, and go back into Lightroom and make sure that's synced over, so now you have all the changes. Sort of a convoluted approach to manage it, and it's kind of uh, subject to some errors. I've come up with a little better way that still requires that intermediate file, but the nice part is it's simpler, doesn't require any scrounging around in your operating system, and is much less prone to errors. So I thought I'd do a quick video and just walk through my steps, and if you're fighting the PSB problem, which unfortunately Lightroom 6 didn't solve, then uh, maybe this will help you. So here are the steps that I do. First, I select the layer which encompasses my full canvas. In this case, I could use either of these two layers. I do a select all by hitting Command or Control A, depending on your operating system. And I do a copy by hitting Command or Control C. The reason I do that is not because I want to copy and paste, but because now when I go to New Document, my dialog box is pre-populated with the exact dimension of my PSB file, my original file. And all I've got to do is hit OK, and now I've got to do documents that's the same size. Now what makes this so slick is I'm going to use a smart object, but not the typical smart object, which embeds the data into the file when we save it. I'm going to use a different type of smart object, which I can get to by using the file placed linked menu item. Once I select that command, I find my original PSB, and I hit place. And my document is now placed as a smart object in this, but the file itself is not included in the smart object, and won't be saved inside the file when I save it. What I end up with is a full basically the equivalent of a flattened TIFF file. It comes up with a transform rectangle as a default, but because my canvas sizes are identical, I can simply click the check mark, and now I'm ready to save this file, which will become my intermediary file to work with inside of Lightroom. So, next step is simply to save it. I'll just go ahead and do a save as. What I usually do is click the file name on the uh, PSB that it came from to populate that file name. And then I will append from PSB, so it gives me an idea of the fact that I need to go to a PSB. Um, you'll notice that because I click the file name, the extension is wrong. 
Easiest way to fix that for me is I'll pick a different choice down here and then go back to TIFF, which will set it correctly. I suppose I could just type in TIFF, doesn't really matter. And I'll hit save. And uh, this is a typical TIFF options, just like you get with any other TIFF. And this should save pretty quickly because it's a simple, flat, one layer TIFF file. Nothing very complicated about it. And took about 10 seconds on uh, my system to save that. So I'm back over in Lightroom and I need to make sure Lightroom can see my newly created file. And the simplest way for me to do that is to right click and synchronize the folder. You'll see that I have one new image available. Hit synchronize. And there is that demo folder. And inside of that we have my newly created TIFF file. Notice that the PSP doesn't show. I wish Adobe would fix that, then none of this would be necessary. So that's pretty cool. Now you might be asking yourself, well, what's different about doing a flatten and saving a TIFF? The reason is because if I need to make a change to this file, it's a lot less complicated, less subject to maybe making an error, or getting files mixed up, because I don't have to go through this process of going through the operating system. Let me just show you quickly how I would make a change now. Just like any other file in Lightroom, I would go edit in, and I would edit in uh, Photoshop. That will move over to Photoshop, open the file, and there it is. And now to make my changes, all I do is double click my smart object, and that will open the PSB file for me inside of Photoshop. Now I can edit my master file uh, in any way that I want. Let's make an edit that's real obvious. We're going to throw on a little text. If I could type, there we go. And let's commit that. And once finished, I simply close that window and I hit save. And once that's saved, the window closes and now we're back to the intermediary file. And you'll notice now Photoshop has built a new version of the TIFF that includes whatever is visible in the PSB file and all the changes that we made. Now we simply close that file by hitting Command W, Control W on a Windows, hit Save. And this won't take too long because it's again a simple single layer file, uh, not, not very complicated to write. And now we can move back over into Lightroom. And there's our modified file that we went to the PSB to make a change that simple. So I was able to do all that without going into the operating system, without having to hunt for my PSB file. It's important to note that you should always modify the PSB through the intermediary file. That's one of the reasons this works so well. If you don't open that file through the smart object on the intermediary file and save it, your, this intermediary file won't know about any changes. But I don't know why you would do that because this means you don't have to go hunt for it. It's just a lot simpler. So that's how I manage my PSB files now. Here's hoping that Lightroom 7 or an update to Lightroom CC will solve this problem either by supporting PSB files or by somehow getting past this outdated 4 gigabyte limit on image files. But in the meantime, this is much more workable than what I used to do. I hope this is helpful. Appreciate you watching. Thanks.